Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. Um, I've had a really stressful couple of weeks. I'm clearly in a new house, and this is not gonna be my permanent filming backdrop, actually. I'm just kind of filming here till I get my office set up, but um, basically, if you don't follow me on social media or my vlog channel or something like that, you probably didn't hear what hell I have been through trying to get into this house. We were supposed to move like a seamless thing, you know, move out of one house, move into the next house on the same day, but everything got messed up with our real estate agent. Basically, we had time in between the two houses and I had nowhere to film because I moved in with my dad. If you want to know the full story of that, I will link my vlog channel below, but that is where I've been. But I'm back now and I'm super excited to film today. Today's video is another exposed video. I found a story about this man and it's unbelievable what happened to him. So I'm going to explain all of that to you today. Here we are in my bedroom. I know I don't normally film in my bedroom. Maybe you remember me filming in my old bedroom probably about two years ago if you've been around for that long. But uh, yeah, this is just temporary for right now. So before I get into telling you about this story, which is really, really crazy, this video is sponsored by Experian Boost. Credit is one of those things that's actually really important and you don't realize how important it is until you need a good credit score. I feel like in high school, we should literally have a class on these types of things because no one explained credit to me. I didn't really understand any of it. And having good credit is definitely one of the most important things to aid your success in life. So Experian Boost is a new product by Experian and it's basically a way that anyone can improve their credit score very, very quickly. If you pay a phone bill or an electricity bill or anything like that, your name's on it, Experian can help improve your credit score just with that information instantly. Bills that you're already paying through your bank account work, like water, gas, electric, cable, trash. This is actually the first time that a credit bureau is letting people put those types of things towards improving their credit score. So it's really unique and it allows you to raise your credit score instantly instantly and it's super easy and it's free. Experian is trying to boost America's credit score and that's why most people that go through this process get boosted instantly. And the customer is in control. You're able to add or remove boost at any time. Experian Boost is safe, secure, and 100% free. There is no credit card required and it allows you to bump that FICO score immediately. And Boost is exclusive to Experian and only available at experian.com slash Kendall Ray. And that is also linked in the top of the description box. So definitely check it out. Trust me, it's important to have good credit. Now let's get into our story for today. This one is so weird, okay? So I'm gonna be telling you about a guy named Ralph. And Ralph, oh man, he is just one of those people who seems like one of the nicest people, total salt of the earth, really, really humble dude. And he ended up in such a horrible situation, it's unreal. His full name is Ralph Rains Jr. and he's from Gaston, Oregon. And Gaston is a small city, the population is less than a thousand people, and he was a pretty lonely guy in this city. I mean, it was a small place, he didn't have that many people who knew, he didn't have a love interest, and he was always looking for someone to share his life with. Ralph was actually an only child and his dad was very, very wealthy, so he owned this tree farm, and this is a huge tree farm massive and he had spent his whole life maintaining these trees uh, improving the tree farm and just living off of the land he was a pretty funky guy you would definitely consider him to be a little different but people really liked that about him he was really quirky but he'd always been kind of a lonely guy stuck to himself he was even described as sometimes socially inept and really kind of unable to make clear social connections so he just didn't really have that many friends, and people said he kind of had trouble understanding social dynamics. Now, Ralph was a major nature guy. Um, you could say he was a tree hugger. <laughs> he literally owned so many trees, and it was his everyday life taking care of them. He loved trees, he was fascinated by them. Anything about trees, he would talk about all day with you. He just truly loved what he did. Father had a lot of money, that's how they got a hold of this tree farm, but he kind of just lived off of that and maintained it his entire life. He stayed working in the family business. He was always going to inherit the tree farm. But even though he was pretty much set up for life, like he could just do what he loved every single day, which is pretty awesome. He also though didn't have really any solid relationships in his life. His dad was very old. He had no children. He never got married. He didn't even have a lot of friends. A lot of his family members were gone or lived in different areas. So he was very lonely a lot of the time. But one thing that was interesting about Ralph is he was really into the paranormal. So he liked you 
UFOs, aliens, all that type of stuff, but he also really liked psychics. So this is when someone named Rachel Lee comes into our story, and she became a psychic in this small town. She opened a brand new palm reading shop right near Ralph, and as soon as he discovered this shop, he decided that he was going to visit, and he actually visited several times, and it didn't take long before her and Ralph started to build a very intense friendship. She almost became kind of a counselor figure to Ralph, and you know, he had this idea that she had some type of ability where she could help guide him, and he was so fascinated by her abilities that I think he was willing to believe pretty much anything she said. And one thing that you learn about him is he's very gullible. So when it comes to me and psychics, I actually really do believe that some people have a psychic gift, whether that's even, you know, dreaming things, having little premonitions here and there, or being a full blown psychic or medium. And I do believe they exist, but I think there's a lot of frauds out there. I think I've seen some of them myself. I've never had a good psychic reading. Everyone I've had has been like, what are you even talking about? You know, a few years ago, I had a psychic tell me that I was going to end up breaking up with my boyfriend and moving to Europe and I'm married now. So, you know, things like that. Not everyone I think is genuine with their powers and people will, you know, prey on people who are interested in this type of stuff, but don't feel knowledgeable in it. So Ralph started to tell her quickly about, you know, all of his life, about how much money he had, how big this tree farm was, and you know, how he was lonely. And Rachel quickly realized that this guy was the perfect target for her. He was lonely, he had a bunch of money, and as soon as she figured this out, she just dug her claws into him. And she was really there for him. She became a friend to him to talk to about his loneliness. She said they talked a lot about how lonely he was, and she said that she was also lonely, that she felt like she didn't have a lot of good relationships in her life either, and her husband or previous husband had passed away from cancer. And this is just her way of kind of getting through to him and getting that sympathy card going. And she also told Ralph that she was her husband's lone caretaker at the end of his life. And he really admired that about her and thought she was a really genuine and awesome person. So it didn't take long before Rachel started to gain Ralph's trust. She became the only person that really had a strong connection with Ralph and kind of his main confidant. It went on for a long time, her patiently grooming him, working her way in, building that trust. And this is called a sweetheart swindle. There's actually a name for it. And it's when younger women will come into older men with money and some emotional problem or something and take advantage of them. So this is actually something that happens quite often, unfortunately. Over the next several years, Rachel and Ralph spent plenty of time together and she became his main companion. And this is the point where Ralph Ralph started to spoil Rachel with gifts. He'd write her random checks. And during this time, Rachel also introduced Ralph to a guy named Blancy Lee. And Rachel told Ralph that Blancy was a guy in her life often known to date her on and off. Rachel and Blancy were both from California and had originally moved back to Oregon. And back when they were together, Blancy and Rachel were living a pretty middle-class life, living off the money that Rachel made from her business. So it wasn't like a romantic relationship between Rachel and Ralph. Blancy was was always kind of there as her romantic partner and eventually Ralph became friends with him. He was known for doing handiwork and stuff like that so he ended up helping him build a deck on his back porch. So everything was going well and Rachel was in full control of Ralph. Ralph had always lived really minimalistically. He could have spent so much more on himself in his life but he's just not like that. So two years into their friendship, Rachel somehow convinces Ralph that it would be a good idea to buy this sick house, this big house, bigger than the one that he even lived in on the tree farm. This was a nice house. It cost over $900,000 and it was in Portland, Oregon in a suburb area, um, much nicer than anything Ralph himself had ever lived in. So why did he buy this house? Well, Rachel, you know, she's a psychic, so she's convincing him she's seeing good things happening for him and stuff, and that it would be a good opportunity to invest in a house and that long term it will be better and that if he buys it now, her family and her can live in it just in the time being, you know, get it ready for resale in a few years when they're ready to make a shit ton of money off of it, off this big investment. And he somehow just agreed to this and let her buy this house and move in with her family. So a little while after they had all moved in, Ralph's father 
was very elderly and he had a stroke. And it was so bad that he was never gonna be able to take care of himself ever again. He would always need assisted living. So Ralph is currently living alone with his father at the tree farm and Rachel is living in this super, super nice house. So Rachel, you know, trying to be the best friend of Ralph, decides to step up and be the caretaker for Ralph's father. She said she'd be happy to move into Ralph's house and take care of him full time. So Ralph was really satisfied with how everything was going at this point. Um, Rachel lived pretty much at the house with them, taking care of his father and also making sure all the finances were in order. Eventually, Ralph got to the point where he just didn't even wanna know what was going on with his money. He wanted someone else to just manage it. He didn't like money. For him, money had no value. He was more interested in his trees. So he really turned on blinders when it came to his finances. So moving forward in time a little bit to October of 2007. Ralph and Rachel were doing just fine at this point. They still have a great friendship and everything. And Ralph had actually gone to a timber convention. He flew back home from the timber convention and at the airport, he called Rachel to see if she would pick him up from the airport. She told him to wait at a specific bench and that she would meet him there. But little did he know, a different woman would be meeting him there. <laughs> this woman came up to Ralph and introduced herself as Mary Marks. She had a thick British accent and she was very tall with long blonde hair, which was Ralph's type. So Mary Marks sat down next to Ralph and asked him if his name was Ralph. And he said, uh, yeah, how'd you know that? And she said, well, I'm psychic. And at this point she offered to give him a psychic reading. So little does Ralph know, this woman Mary actually has a connection to Rachel, I'm sure you could have guessed. And Rachel had told this woman all the things that she would need to know about Ralph to make it seem like she was psychic. So she's sitting there telling him all this stuff, blowing his mind, and he's like, wow, you're incredible. How did you know these things about me? Mary told Ralph that she just had this natural gift and she does it as a hobby, but she's actually a bookkeeper. She was a British citizen and just living in the US, but she did offer to help Ralph with his finances, you know, using her little hobby. So Ralph was like, like, hell yeah, sounds pretty good to me. Like another woman to come in and look at my finances. Excellent, because I have no idea what the hell is going on. And he kind of saw it as a way to keep Rachel in check, that there would be two women who didn't know each other doing the same work, you know, so they would kind of hold each other accountable. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually Mary told Ralph that her travel visa was going to expire and that she needed to marry someone in order to get a green card and stay. And he really liked her at this point. So he decided that he was going to marry her. He was under the impression that she had a full-time job in California. So they barely even saw each other. Even though they were married, they didn't live together. It was just on paper. <laughs> and they were never intimate in their relationship actually. And I think a lot of people would think that, but they were not. However, However, that did not stop them from having a kid. Mary was trying to convince him to have a kid via artificial insemination. And he was kind of back and forth on this. They never fully made a decision. I don't even think they actually ever did the extraction or whatever the hell happens. But she leaves for nine months and then nine months later she comes back with a baby. And I'm not even kidding. She named their baby Giorgio Armani. Yeah. Giorgio and I sure miss you. Yay. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Give it one more time, Ralph. So this poor baby grew up thinking that Ralph was his father. And spoiler alert, that's not true. So while all this is happening with Mary and Giorgio Armani and Ralph, Rachel is starting to date Blancy again. After Rachel had been working for Ralph for three years, he decided he trusted her enough to completely let go of his finances and let her take the reins entirely. And he made one of the biggest mistakes, which was signing power of attorney forms. This meant that Rachel finally had control over all of Ralph's finances. And because she had this control and also worked for Ralph, she was technically now the one paying herself. Rachel got to work quickly, ruining Ralph's life. The first thing that she did was sell a bunch of his stocks and then take the money and put it into a corporate account. And this is the same account that Rachel would pay herself out of. So as you can imagine, she was overpaying herself quite a lot. Keep in mind, at this time, Rachel is still the caretaker for Ralph's father. And it's reported that he was in terrible condition multiple times, basically 
physically abusive situations where he was left almost neglected. And this is when she started to convince Ralph that she would actually do a better job of caretaking if she could do it at her house in Portland, the fancier house that she owned. So Ralph agreed and he decided to move his father in there. However, even though this house had five bedrooms, they were all occupied by Rachel's family members and not a single one was left for Ralph's father. He literally was living out his final days in a hallway. So during all of this, Rachel was distributing her money between her bank account, Blancy's bank account, and Mary's bank account. Now let's talk about Mary for a second. All of Rachel's family members, as well as Mary, had Ralph's corporate credit cards, and they did not hold back from using them. They ate at the nicest restaurants, shopped at the fanciest stores, and wore luxury designer brands. Rachel and Blancy even spent $300,000 worth of Ralph's money just in Nordstrom's. They also traveled on many trips. Rachel and Blancy used the credit cards to take a very lavish vacation to Europe. They flew first class to places like Paris, Monaco, Italy, Venice, Rome, and they even stayed in hotel rooms that cost $2,000 per night. They also really enjoyed gambling, which is a mess when you have a bunch of money to use. And they were known to spend huge sums of money at the Casino Royale and various places in Las Vegas, also while staying in the nicest suites and the fanciest hotels on the Strip. One time during their stay in the Bellagio, Rachel ended up buying Blancy a Rolex that was worth $64,000. They basically had no concept of money anymore and they were just spending it on whatever they wanted. It was estimated that they spent close to $100,000 on plane tickets alone. Rachel was continuing to spend Ralph's money on different properties all throughout the country. She was even buying little psychic shops all around Oregon. So this case actually started to kind of unravel when a woman named Liz stepped into the picture. She was a detective in the area. One day she was just driving to work when she noticed a house that was still having a lot of construction on it and it was off the side of the highway. The remodeling on this house was going on for a year and a half. She also noticed that there were some really fancy cars parked outside of this house and this wasn't a super fancy house. This was actually a house that Rachel was currently turning into a psychic shop, but it was just taking forever to get it built. One of the cars parked outside of this little shop though was a Ferrari. And Liz thought this was weird because this is a really small town and you just don't see Ferraris riding around. She was confused because, you know, this person clearly had a lot of money, but why would they be taking the time to remodel this tiny little house? The license plate on the car said Mr. Big and it was registered as Blancy's car. And Liz also saw a smart car parked outside the house with a license plate that said Mary Hart Ralph. So it was then that Liz discovered that Ralph was the owner of these cars and the house and a tree farm as well. And with her past experience, Liz said she immediately thought something could be up. She didn't see why this random tree farmer would be involved with a Ferrari and a bunch of random psychic shops. I mean, none of this was adding up. But even though she was suspicious, there wasn't any crime happening. There wasn't a victim, so she couldn't get involved. And they didn't even have the jurisdiction to get involved either. So fast forward about a year and a half later, Liz, the detective, was at a training seminar. This is where she started talking with this guy named Floyd. And Floyd was from the Canby Police Department. And Canby was the small town where she noticed the really nice cars parked outside of this small house. So she told Floyd about how she thought that Ralph might be involved in some type of scam and he thought that was pretty interesting and decided to investigate further. They decided to contact the IRS and look a little bit closer at his finances and see if this would be the start of an investigation. There was this woman in the town named Marlene and she used to hang out at this tree farm all the time. She used to work on it and stuff. So they sent her in to see how the tree farm was going, make sure everything was normal as she remembered it when she used to work there. And she reported back to them that it was in terrible condition. Almost all the trees were gone, it had gone way downhill. This is when it became clear that all of the trees had been cut down and sold off by Rachel. Now, this is really devastating. I think this is one of the saddest things. I mean, this was a family tree farm and Ralph truly loved it. I mean, it meant a lot to him because it was his father's and he was taking care of it, but also because he loved these trees. Once Rachel had gone through all of Ralph's money that was in his bank account, she sold off everything he had by selling off all of the trees. She somehow convinced him that he was completely broke because of inheritance tax. And the only way to pay it off was to sell the tree farm. So Ralph was like, 
well shit and actually gave her permission to sell his entire tree farm because that's how much he trusted her. Over one year, Rachel had sold the entire tree farm in four parts that ended up equaling about $12 million when all was said and done. They ended up basically selling all the land except for a little bit, two parcels for him, his wife, Mary, and his child, Giorgio Armani. And after Rachel sold off all the land, Rachel and Blancy went berserk. They bought Ferraris. They just bought whatever they wanted, used up all the money. So eventually Floyd and Liz discovered all the crazy financial decisions that Rachel was making on Ralph's behalf. And Floyd decided that he was going to go to Ralph's house and try to talk with him. So he showed up at his door and asked him what he knew about Rachel's handling his money and said things like, do you know that Rachel is spending $200,000 of your money on things like Ferraris? And at first, Ralph kind of refused to talk about it. it. Seemed like all he really wanted to talk about was his tree farm. Eventually he did give them a tour of his property. He was kind of showing them the trees and stuff, but whenever they'd bring up what was going on with Rachel, he would kind of skate around the issue. Floyd told him everything, laid it all out from all the money that Rachel was spending. We have a sustainable certified forest. She said, yes, I spent a lot of money on myself. And she said, yes, I did accumulate a gambling debt. We had so many cock and bull stories, I didn't know what to think. The reason it got so bad was um, I didn't get enough good advice on what to do and what I can't do. And at the end of the day, he was still somewhat defending her. Ralph ended up still feeling so loyal to Rachel that when they left, he ended up calling her and telling her everything that they had said about her and how she was like in all this trouble and stuff and Rachel was pissed. So detectives ended up having to work quickly now that she knew about it. So they ended up getting a search warrant for that psychic shop in Canby. And this is when they found a bunch of expensive jewelry, Rolexes, rare coins, and at least two blonde wigs. And one of these wigs was actually found between the mattress and a bed frame. And the wig had a pair of glasses and a hat with it. This was the same setup as Miss Mary Marks was wearing. I'm sure when you guys saw the picture of her, you were like, she's in a disguise. It's pretty obvious, but apparently Ralph did not realize that this woman is not even named Mary. Turns out that Mary is actually Rachel's daughter. Her name is Portia. And apparently Portia was someone who always wanted to stay on her mother's good side. She would do anything that she told her to, including dress up and like seduce a man. And she was only 17 years old when she first sent her out to do this. And this had gone on for years. So what about their son, George? Giorgio Armani. Well, since there was no sexual activity involved, and I don't believe they ever went to like a in vitro specialist or anything, it's very clear that Giorgio is not their actual son. So who is he? He is actually the son of one of Rachel's other daughters who was just letting him play the part of Giorgio Armani. But it turns out that Mary Marks actually was a real person. She was Rachel's mother, and it's easier to use a real name when you're gonna do one of these scams. If you're going to be opening a bank account out transferring property assets, it really does help to have it under a name, a real name. So while all this was happening, Ralph actually suddenly went missing, which was really scary. Police were very concerned. Ralph's lawyer was actually really concerned that maybe Portia and Rachel were involved in it or would find him and hurt him. And because of this, the police ended up deciding to arrest Rachel and Portia. And when they got to their house, they seemed like they were actually packing up to flee, like they were already headed out. They had $36,000 in cash on them and they had like burner phones, disposable phones. They'd gotten rid of their iPhones so that they couldn't be tracked. Ralph was actually found in the garage behind the psychic shop and he seemed to be dazed and confused and had no idea what was going on. Portia and Rachel were arrested right away and Blancy was arrested quickly after that. But by the time they were arrested, they had stolen over 50 15 million dollars from Ralph. Unbelievable. However, despite this, Ralph has remained the nicest guy about it. He says he has no regrets about sharing his life with them. He says he wishes nothing but good things for them. I have very good memories from them. We did a lot of things together and, you know, with my dad and, uh, and Giorgio. And even after everything that Ralph had been through, he still felt bad for Rachel. He didn't feel like he was a victim. He would make the prosecution's job way harder because he would write them letters saying he didn't feel like a victim. He wanted them to get off. He wanted to help them. Ralph had even sent letters to the prosecution that seemed like they were written by Rachel. And there's a good possibility she was telling him what to say. I don't think he had a lot of control of really anything. And Ralph was so brainwashed by them that he was 
still wearing his wedding band from Mary Marks, who he even knew wasn't a real person. They sat down with her, made her take the wig and glasses off in front of him, you know, let it all sink in, and he still feels a loyalty to her. He still is wearing the ring, he still thinks they're married. I view Mary as a real person. During the trial, Portia argued that she was a victim because her mother made her get involved in this scam when she was only 17 years old, but the judge really wasn't feeling that at all and was like, you know, you had every opportunity to get out of this early on. You let it go on for seven years. She let this go on before she got caught. By the time that Portia was actually sentenced, she was 25 years old and the judge sentenced her to 33 months in prison. Blancy ended up getting a reduced sentence of 24 months because he cooperated during the case and also promised to pay Ralph back. And Rachel got the worst of it getting eight years in prison but even after all of this Ralph still wishes them well he hopes they all get out of prison one day and continue living their best lives I want them all to get out and do well yes start leading a normal life I want them to do well honestly but it was later found out that Rachel was already working on another victim so Ralph wasn't the only one she was trying to destroy Ralph says he dearly misses his son Giorgio Although he is just fine, he's living with his actual mother in California, so he doesn't know the difference. Ralph says that he hopes he made a positive impact on Giorgio's life. Ralph now has someone called a conservator, and he's there to help actually manage Ralph's money securely so that this doesn't happen again and that he will make any money back from the sales of the Ferrari and whatever else Blancy and Rachel had spent money on. The damage is really, really done. He's never gonna get back from that $12 million range he was at. Um, they've talked about how he'll get probably close to seven mil back, which for him, that's fine. He doesn't care, he's so humble. He's honestly more upset that these women had to go to trial and go to jail, so. Ralph says he doesn't care about money or anything else really. He just wants to spend the rest of his life watching the trees grow in what's left of his tree farm. So it's a really crazy story. I thought this was so incredibly sad. Um, this man is just too humble for the earth, too pure for the earth. He was just so taken advantage of. These sweetheart swindles on old men are actually really popular and it happens quite often. So it's really important with older people in your life to make sure that the people around them are not taking advantage of them in any way because that happens very easily. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be back to having a normal filming setup pretty soon. I, don't, I know you guys don't care though. Whatever, the bed's cool, right? Oh, there was a dog back there. I was gonna say you're gonna see a dog, but he's not even there. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thanks for being patient with me during this move, and I will see you next time.